um, apologize. We had some noise from different uh, microphones. So please make sure whilst you're not speaking, just turn off your microphone so no one else will, will hear uh, the background noise. Okay, so we always start this uh, session talking about the audience because to be honest, in training, it always starts with the audience every time, yeah, when we organize training. And if you think about um, during this week, we already tried to engage with our audience, our prospect audience, actually, to know a little bit more, to learn about you and know a bit more about you. Uh, but that was not enough for us. So we want to know where you are attending this session from today. So um, we ask you uh, to draw something or use the pointer uh, to place a, an arrow in the place where you are. If you are in the beach, maybe you are in the office. Yeah, uh, that's I see many of you already drawing. If you are attending this session from a mobile device, then you have no access to uh, drawing tools. So I ask you to write in the chat box instead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I can see now that most of you are in the office or at home and uh, more arrows coming. Let's see. That's great. It's always good to know um, where people are attending from. And then there are so many different settings uh, when we are teaching online either on a live session like this or uh, doing asynchronous activities. People these days will attend uh, their training from different parts, uh, wherever they have access uh, to internet or any other connection in a library. Um, you will see here, um, there is a picture that I always uh, point out to here. Um, it's a colleague of us attending uh, an online session uh, in the train on her way to uh, home. So some of you will recognize this lady and I think this picture got so um, famous all over the world, we always use it. So thank you Roro for sharing it with us. Yeah, um, but there are other things that uh, we want sometimes to know about our audience as well. So um, we have, uh, we have some questions for you um, again. And we had, um, we had a, a survey uh, that was shared with you. And this morning, we got the results from the survey. And uh, the first question in our uh, survey was about who from, from you had already delivered a live session online before. Uh, we had 67% saying that, yes, um, they had already delivered. It was funny because we were um, revising uh, results from a similar webinar we presented two years ago. And the result we had two years ago was 45%. So, of course, this depends a lot on the audience. Uh, but also, maybe we could think that it represents um, an increase on people offering um, online sessions, maybe. Yeah. Uh, we cannot, of course, uh, from from this question, uh, explore much about the reasons this um, uh, is more, um, it's higher now, this number is higher. But uh, uh, in fact, we know that for these audience that are here today, um, the, the great majority of you already offered um, online sessions before. And uh, if you um, offered online sessions before and actually even if you just participated in some online sessions um we always think uh well, what is the expectations those those people have like the people participating in the session and also the person who offers um, the session so for today i would like you to use quickly in the chat box uh write what would be the most urgent questions you have regarding the topic we are exploring today, which is how to make sessions more active online. So the chat box you will find um, under the um, below uh, the attendees list, 
And I ask you to choose to send the chat to everyone, to, to all participants, so everyone can read it. I'll give you some minutes to write. Okay, so now we start seeing some. So from Brock, we had, um, he would like to know some variety of activities to keep online participants engaged. Good, we will touch on this. Good. Paul, how can we as instructors best interact with the participants? Great. Hopefully we will uh, try to, to explore it a little bit during the, the session. Let's see, there's more coming. Bruce, how to assure that everyone, oops, the box keeps coming. <laughs> how to assure everyone has a proper setup for participating in the session, technical difficulties. Mm, yeah, Bruce, that's very up to date question these days. Yeah. <laughs> um, Claudia, examples of exercise. Yeah. Um, Alif, um, how we can get the audience attention. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> like this. Path. Let's see. Uh, what is one of the simplest ways to generate high interaction? Okay, we will have. We will try to touch on a bit on all the the um, topics you have been putting in the chat box. So that's great. So we know that um, we will try our best to um, attend your expectations. And actually, someone was just to touching on one aspect: attention. Um, and now I want to ask you one thing, and I want you to be very, very honest, okay? We will not see who says what, so don't worry. Just be very, very careful. The question is, how often do you multitask when attending an online session? And I'm going to open a poll, so you don't need to write in the chat box. You will be able to answer the poll in your mobile and in your uh, desktop. I see many people already um, answering this question. I'll just give a little bit. Be very, very <laughs> honest. See, we are not going to be able to identify who says what. I see the, the, the results changing all the time. So wait a little bit more to get it stable. It seems that now no one else is changing their opinion. Okay, so I'll close the poll. Yeah. Give a little bit more, a few seconds for those answers that are still coming. And I will show you the results actually. Okay, all results in. And let's see if I can share that. Right, I hope you can all see it now. Um, so we have, I think the highest percentage said that sometimes, some actually say, yeah, 26% says that very frequently uh, they multitask. Others rarely, never is, not an answer. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much for, for sharing this. I think this says a lot about uh, how, what is our behavior when we are in a session. But there is something else um, I want to know. I want to know um, a more important question now. I'm changing and in the chat, yeah, in, in the screen, why do you choose to multitask? And again, I will give you a few answers and open a poll. So now you can choose more than one if you want, more than one answer. So I see people already getting on.
one of um, the options there is that none of the options we wrote there represents your situation. So for these people, if you could write in the chat box, um, why do you think you multitask a few times? Yeah. I'll keep the poll open for a couple more minutes so everyone can um, answer it. Okay, so uh, we will actually close and try to share the results. Okay. Right, so you should be able to see in your screen, yeah, the results of the poll, I hope so. Um, yeah, so as we can see here, uh, the great majority, 77% said that they're very busy and have little time uh, to, to, to attend the session. So that's why they multitask. The second highest was that the presenter does not ask for interaction. So that, I think, gives us good food for thought, yeah? And the other top uh, answer is that they cannot stop working uh, to attend on online training. Um, I will see just in the chat if we have any, any other answer uh, at the moment. No? Okay. So thank you very much. I think um, this uh, poll gives us an insight on, on why uh, multitasking happens. And uh, maybe we could think about uh, ways to reduce these uh, reasons uh, so that we can facilitate more engagement, yeah? Um, so from this, um, I think in addition to all these reasons that we put there, and those are not uh, covering all the reasons that a person could have for multitasking, but in addition to that, um, there are other factors that influence engagement and interaction, and many are related to the scenario of the training session. Uh, so I invite Veza now to explore a bit more about the different scenarios that we may find ourselves when in training online. So Veza, I will pass it to you now. Thank you, Lou. Yes, we uh, uh, identify three different uh, modes of uh, training online. Can you, can you move yourself? I think it's better now. I heard some echo. Now it's working fine. So there we see the three different modes of uh, giving online training sessions. The one on the on the left is when the trainers and learners are all online. This is something that we often nowadays, even this session here is uh, is such a session, with an exception that the, this time the, the trainers are in the same room, as well as I heard that before the session started that some of you are also sharing this session, maybe using the same screen or at least being in the same room so you can join this session together. Another fairly challenging mode of uh, running the online session, especially for a trainer online, is when you have to be somewhere online and uh, there's a classroom event or a, a classroom uh, course going on somewhere and they have asked you to give a presentation online. That is a, such an event where you have to prepare yourself being alone somewhere else, maybe having challenges to know what the other people are doing in the actual classroom. Are they paying any attention? They are somehow out of your control. And what can you do to help to increase this interaction so that you will keep them with you and not lose them? The third mode is when a trainer has actually two audiences to cater for. One is the learners in his classroom, 
and additionally there may be some participants who were not able uh, to attend this event uh, in person so they have been asking can they uh, attend and listen up to the session online and then as a trainer you have to take care of not only of the people in your classroom but you also have to remember that there are people outside who want to get the best out of your session so you can think uh, think about these different scenarios and how how challenging they are for you maybe you have experience of all of them for me the the one where i'm online trainer and i have no connection with my audience somewhere far away this is the most challenging for me personally we did receive uh, quite nice feedback uh, from you uh, until this morning and we just uh, took some uh, some of your points when we were asking about your own experiences of the challenging online events that you have had and um, we, we can actually find two of two major challenges are being expressed on, on most of the answers the one is that you don't have the personal contact with your audience so you don't, we even we here we don't have any idea what you are doing at the moment we expect that you are paying attention and uh, maybe that's true but still there's a little it's a it's a kind of a uncomfortable situation not to have the eye contact with your audience and with your colleagues and the second one that was clearly expressed many times is that there are always the technical issues that can ruin all our fancy plans and uh, uh, good intentions how can you actually tackle with the technical problems when you, when your when your system goes down it goes down do you have a plan b what can we do how can you uh, still recover what can be recovered and um, the third point that i also was pointed out is that when you have regular events like every month you have a session to run which is basically the same structure how much can you actually variable, variate your activities so that the people who are attending maybe many times or regularly, they don't feel that they are being fed with the same activities every time. Um, all, these, all these points, are, we were very happy to receive these findings and uh, we are kind of, we're also we're comparing with the replies that you had sent two or two years ago or the audience had sent uh, four years ago and we see that the still the, the technical problems and the being disconnected is uh, seem to be the major problems uh, when doing the online instruction so what can we do to make our training sessions more active uh, being aware that the all these constraints and challenges we can have for our sessions we have uh, selected and uh, grouped four different ways of uh, interaction or methods that can help you to make your training session more active. And uh, you can see them here on the slide. There's, there's, a, there's a design to engage. So when you design your lecture or design your presentation or design your interactive session, whatever it is, prepare for finding ways ways to make it more engaging for your for your learners what can you do also not only having in mind to, to convey information to your audience but to facilitate learning that people can discover something out themselves when they are working on their on on their devices somehow to build the virtual presence so not to be just a distant voice on 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 the headset but to make them feel that you are with them even if you are not with them and the fourth point is to how you can increase the interaction and uh, even even apply some problem solving online problem solving or something that engages people to really pay attention and leave all their different things away and just concentrate on what they are doing at the moment these are the methods that we would like to speak and work on with you today so i'm just talking about the designing to engage Engagement, this often comes with the visualization, with good visual graphics. So, especially in the meteorology, we, we, you, uh, we are used to have the images and uh, animations. Be brave to use them. Uh, don't, don't just stick to the bullet points, but use your meteorological material. That's always more engaging than the text alone. Also, um, 
it's it's a it's a good way to um, use as clear graphics as possible just to take care of all the learners that are with you that probably have problems with the seeing or hearing so all these things you need to think about well before your actual session i would like to actually point out to a third poll and uh, lou will now take over the uh, over the controls i hope i still keep on my audio and she will point us the third poll which is uh, interaction possibilities I think I your, your microphone is on again automatically. Thank you. And uh, once we have the poll, I think the poll is now available, yes. So you have a question there about what interaction possibilities you use most often. And we have, I think we have nine to ten different options. So please have a have a moment to think about which kind of interactions you use most often. And then we can discuss after a while about your answers. So the options are chat, polling, annotation, emoticons status icons you know the smileys different types of smileys videos animations streaming video breakout rooms that these are the rooms that uh, you can have a subgroup discussion uh, and uh, then the eight uh, uh, the rest of the options are web tour where you take your audience with you and uh, and use a browser to take them to different websites and the last option is app share So, Lou has now published the results and as I was expecting, the most popular way of interact with your audience is to use the chat. And why is that? It's naturally the easiest way to everybody attend. They don't have to microphone, you can just type in your answers, discuss with the other people and it's fairly quick. You, people give you very quick feed, you can get very quick feedback from the audience just by using the chat. I saw earlier Patrick was asking uh, the simplest ways to generate high interaction. I don't know if you can call chat a high interaction. I think chatting can be quite high interaction, active, active, level, active way of discussing, and it's the easiest one. So I would maybe suggest that the chat is still the best one if you want to have a very simple solution. Uh, the second most used one is the videos and animations, which is very good for the meteorological audience. And then we have the emoticons and status icons, smileys and uh, yes, no answers and so on. And all the rest have a little bit less, uh, less answers, but there seems to be, you have been using all of these options. The breakout room is uh, the most rare, rarely used option, maybe because we sometimes have a little bit of fear of uh, technical complications to use the breakout rooms, but they can be fairly useful in the in the large when you want to break out the larger group into smaller discussion groups so i think i can take back the controls again thank you lou so i just show a couple of uh, interactions that we just made this uh, poll about and that using videos and animations for us as the meteorologists the the animations are everyday activity but uh, we should never underestimate the power of in animation for example um let me see if we can have can you uh, show the video i don't see i have the video right now it might maybe yes yes you can upload we just have a here a short video next to show i think um when you when you are using the videos, uh, especially in the meteorological, again, the microphone, please. When you use the videos in uh, in training, there should be a reason to use it. Uh, 
but if you have, for example, a training on certain weather uh, weather system, uh, it is quite helpful when you can show the video to the and see show the development to the people. In the online environment, it can be fairly complicated to uh, uh, to show the video with uh, there when there is no option for people to actually annotate. It seems we have a problem to actually show this video. We can show it later. There's no no problem with that. But uh, thank you. But when you um, the best options for using the the videos is probably with the chat. So that when you show uh, an animation or a sequence of a weather event, you can try to uh, discuss about what the people see, ask questions, and they can type in their their answers in the text chat box. Normally, the an annotation on top of the image is, is not supported by many systems. Uh, we have been exploring quite a few online systems, and there's only maybe one or two which are really good in, in, in annotating of, on, on top of the uh, animation. Animated GIFs normally work well. Uh, here you see one animation, probably it's running now on your screens as well. This is uh, just one day of a few hours of animation, uh, which shows you a weather event last month over Europe. When you are with your audience, there's a clear, you can see that there's something happening. You can discuss that well, it's, it's, there seems something violet or lila purple colors appearing over the Poland, and then they spread over to the Denmark. The question I could do here and to, to interact with you, you could use your chat text, text chat box and uh, uh, give your ideas, what can this magenta or purple thing be? I give you a few uh, tens of seconds to think about what could it be. Yes, I see there are guesses like smoke or dust. Any other options? I saw also a question from Bruce earlier that I didn't see uh, that in WebEx, do we upload the video in order to show it? That's what we do here, that, that uh, we upload the video and it becomes one tab that we can choose in, during the session. Volcanic ash could be also, but there's no volcanoes in Poland, I think. So that's probably not the thing. Well, I can give you the answer. It, it is uh, indeed dust. Um, this is so-called so dust RGB product, which shows the dust in uh, purple color. Why it happened to happen over Poland, it was a very, very unusual weather event with a very high winds and the dust was lifted from the very, very dry soil. And it uh, actually formed a dust cloud that moved over over, over to Denmark and uh, it caused some visibility problems in aviation as well. So this with the, this kind of a video, you can easily and quickly show the feature you want to show even online. Thank you for your answers. I think I'll return back to the main presentation. The next form of engagement is to how can we facilitate discovery learning? What means discovery learning is, uh, I, I understand it as that the, the learning that we do, we do not feed the people with spoons, but they have their own freedom, uh, some degree of freedom to find answers themselves. And uh, how can online ways helping facilitate this one? So there comes a question for you. And this time we uh, like you to give your answers just simply by clicking on yes or no button. Do you think that it is possible to facilitate discovery learning in live online training session? And I give you again a few seconds to think about your answer. Is it possible or not? And you can find the yes and no buttons if you are working on the desktop. You will find it at the below the participant panel. The mobile applications won't have this option, but you can give your answer in the text chat box. That works for everybody. 
and I'm seeing some answers already. Most of you have been suggesting that yes, it is possible. I thought, I hope I wasn't too suggestive that the answer might be yes, indeed, yes. Uh, we, we do believe that it's possible, though it's you have to be planning it carefully. Thank you. Uh, I think I move on with thanks for your answers. We will probably be able to clear the answers later on. And uh, when it comes to facilitate the discovery learning, we have different levels of uh, cognitive question levels that you can do to your to your participants. Lower level questions can be simply yes no questions like do you agree? Have you printed a, the the handouts? Do you choose A or B? Raise your hand if you can give me an example of something. And uh, even the simple emoticons are there to to support easy lower cognitive questions like let's give a round of applause to John and so on and most of the web online systems nowadays they support this type of uh, simple reaction simple feedback given back to the instructor so he can have a quick understanding of what the people are uh, what the people are thinking on the higher cognitive questions uh, maybe we can mention that these are these are the questions with that with, that require more thinking, more analysis, more evaluation. Um, these are, of course, questions where you um, have to think more deeply, and then a normal, simple yes/no button tools will not be sufficient for you. Uh, just as an example, I give you one one simple satellite image of today, and uh, there's simple. We could, of course, make simple yes-no questions on, on this picture, for example, do you see any tropical cyclones in the image? And you then might answer yes or no using your yes and no buttons. We won't do this now because we already practice yes and no buttons, but uh, as, a, as an exercise here, you might like, I, I would like you, you to use your annotation tools. Again, those who are working with the mobile phones, you can type in your ideas using the text chat box. but Please type in in the image and try to name the different cloud systems in the image as much as you can. You can do it collaboratively and uh, you can also name the biggest deserts or you can name the oceans. So try to find and use the tools on top of the image. There is the text tools, there are the arrow tools, there are the drawing tools and just please, please feel free to fill in the image with your remarks and we let's see what's the result after everybody's filling in something in the picture and let's have one minute or two minutes for this exercise And I'm not sure you had a question or you're just uh, checking the different um, features. But if you do have a question, just please feel free to turn on your microphone and ask. This type of while you are drawing, just keep on keep on drawing or trying out the controls because this is a moment where you can actually really freely fill in the map with everything. We don't mind. Um, this type of an interaction is. At, at least in my experience, one of the most used interactions in the weather briefings where people are looking at the same image and they are doing an analysis, they are answering the question. And that normally is quite engaging for a person when you are looking at the picture, you are trying to find an answer and then you share it with the others. And what is 
quite valuable, at least for me, is to see that you get the feedback from the others as well. You see what the others are thinking. So there's a, some kind of a peer review of what you are doing and you are getting a feedback from, from each other. So I really encourage to use this type of interaction whenever it's possible. It doesn't have to be a satellite image. It can be many different types of uh, meteorological data that you can look at together and then make annotations on top of it. I'm seeing that there are also some feedback on the text chat box. Uh, uh, Alif, I think you are on, you are onto it. Yeah, you are uh, the drawing onto the image. If you are not, if you are using a desktop, you have the options of the drawing tools on the top of the, the image, on top of the satellite image. There is a an arrow tool, the text tool, and I think. The easiest tool is the pen tool, which is somewhere in the middle of these uh, different tools that allows you to just uh, draw freehand. I'm seeing quite a nice, a lot of uh, answers there. For example, the someone had named uh, correctly Indian Ocean, Atlantic Ocean. Uh, someone has drawn line of uh, probably pointing out the intertropical convergence zone here in the western parts of Africa. I see Emmanuel is on top of it, of course, he's, he knows intertropical convergence zone very well. We have the fronts depicted here, so some of the people have already shown the cold front and the warm front and the occlusion front, and so on and so on. So, so this, um, this actually concludes my part before I trans, uh, give the microphone back to Lou. This is just a very short run through the different types of activities that you can do in for the for the lower and easier and simpler types of questions yes no agree i don't agree and then that you can also facilitate training on much more higher uh, meteorological more challenging types of interactions such like a collaborative evaluation collaborative analysis and interpretation and with this i think i move it back to you lu Okay, thanks, Vesa. And I ask you to mute your microphone. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Okay, so I see that Vesa just had a look at the chat. We had another message now. How can we have access to the drawing tools? Oh, sorry, Chantal. Um, yes, um, uh, Vesa was uh, um, trying to explain. It was on the top. You see the drawing tools on the top of the slide, on the top of the image. So you have to click on one of them and then try them out, either writing or using your um, arrows uh, and uh, drawing pictures. So, yeah, I will have to move on. So maybe we can, if you don't have the time now to, uh, the opportunity now to check the, the drawing tools, maybe at the end of the exercise, we can have oh, okay we can have a test at the end so you can uh, try them too so moving on and uh, now i will talk a little bit about uh, building virtual presence um, and how this can affect the interaction in a live session and in fact actually visa and i uh, have been trying to model this through our session today via a few different approaches and uh, before we talk about this approach, uh, let me clarify first what I mean by virtual present, presence. Uh, I'm not to be confused with a presence in social media, for example. I'm not talking about blogging or Facebooking uh, to reinforce your virtual presence. I'm talking about uh, the virtual presence right now in this room, in this online session. So. Uh, it's more about the degree to which the facilitator is perceived as a real person here in this uh, virtual room with you. So uh, some approaches we have used for this session are, for example, um, before the session, we already sent a survey. In a way, this already invites the participant for dialogue before the session. So it kinds of indicates that there will be somewhere there with you. But regarding to now, at this moment, um, you may remember that in the beginning, in our first uh, slide, you had the um, photos of ourselves. 
yeah, so to guide you who was presenting it. Um, we also tried uh, using streaming video at the beginning when we introduced ourselves. And uh, many uh, learners tell them, uh, us that uh, it is really nice because it feels more personal. Uh, but of course, when you are using so uh, many activities and functionalities that um, compete for bandwidth, uh, sometimes the, the decision, the best decision during the session is actually to turn off that. And I think in terms of uh, streaming video, people have very different opinions about it. So I would like to know what you think. Um, so think when you are attending um, a session, do you like seeing the training, the trainer on a streaming video during the whole session? So I have here yes and no, and I ask you to choose the arrow and put your arrow in the yes or in the no. Yeah, just for us to have an idea um some people are exactly in the middle so i believe it they are trying to say if you are attending in a mobile device like a pad and a mobile phone then remember you don't have the arrows so please feel free to write it in the chat box i see some people already writing there so thank you um okay i see lots of arrows so let's try something different now i want to know a little bit more about that. I'm sure Visa wants to as well. So from the people who said yes, can I have a volunteer raising the hand and telling me uh, you want to speak so you can explain to her using the microphone? Why do you think it's a good thing to have? To raise your hand, it's the first icon in the, in the bar just below participants. Uh, list you have a, a hand there if you click i will know you are raising your hand and then i can give you the uh the floor come on anyone who said yes you like oh i see a volunteer emmanuel emmanuel please turn on your microphone and let us know Hello. Manuel, we can hear you. Okay, you can hear me. Okay, good. Um, I said yes because um, seeing the trainer um, while the video is streaming makes me have a form of connection and have an idea of what you are talking about, especially in terms of expression. Looking at the trainer's face, good. I can see kind of expression on his face, and it um, to me it enhances a kind of understanding of what the trainer is actually trying to talk about. For example, he he discusses a certain topic, and he wants to place some emphasis on it. He keeps saying it. His expression, especially, um, says a lot on how important that point is trying to make it. So that's why I think yes. Thank you, Emmanuel. Uh, we really appreciate you explaining why you would like this. And uh, similarly, maybe can we have a volunteer from uh, a no perspective so you can explain why? I see a hand up from John. John, please go ahead. Hi, yes. Um, I. I gave consideration to yes at first because um, it might be nice to see the trainer at the beginning but i i said no in terms of during the the the, the session the entire session because it may tend to um distract from the the, the real information that you really want to pay attention to so that was my my reason for sliding to the no side in that mm -hmm. um the focus of attention should be on the information and not necessarily the, the messenger. That's great. Thank you for um, letting us know uh, your point, Joe. Uh, John. And I see right in the chat box now, Paul wrote something very similar uh, that for the whole session, he thinks it's quite distracting. 
but at the beginning it's fine uh, because um yeah during the session may be uh, a bit difficult um i think this is a, uh, these are um, common suggestions and actually i think many of people who put their arrow in the middle probably had a very similar point it's good but not all the time uh, a, a very common thing i hear from other trainers is that they cannot speak um, as naturally when they are uh, delivering um, an online presentation because they don't see the expression of people. A friend of mine, a colleague in university, actually said to me that he trained himself uh, to do it more naturally, um, placing, like um, uh, attaching a picture of an audience in front of him, uh, just besides his computer. So he would see people there uh, and it gave him that feeling that he was in front of an audience and he could not have that if he didn't see people in front of him. So people react really different uh, from the perspective of the trainer in terms of how, how naturally they present, uh, but also in terms of um, the, the people attending the session. So for example, if I, I will turn my camera on now and give you an idea of this. Uh, if you are using streaming video with your audience, you really need to, to look at the camera when you talk. So my setting here is that I have two screens, one on the top of the other. So if I'm looking at my material and uh, delivering the session like that, it doesn't give the, the attendees an idea that I'm paying attention to them and uh, so it doesn't bring that personalized feeling uh, just because my camera is on. So that's uh, another thing to, to think about. So if you prefer sharing your screen, then make sure you're paying attention at the audience as you speak. So they feel like you are really dedicating the time to them. And now the final uh, point um, that we want to talk today it's it's about uh, interacting and solving problems and uh, what better i think than a good dialogue uh, when um, when we are in an online session or in a face-to-face -face session as well with questions and comments from the group and um, it, it feels that we are connected with the group and this makes learning stick in our minds because really learning is a social activity. So dialogue is a very, very effective way to do it. And dialogue doesn't need to be only uh, giving people actual voice in, um, with a microphone. Uh, actually, when you are online, if you have too many people in the audience, it is really hard to give opportunity for every single person to take the microphone and express themselves. So we usually use the chat box uh, as this is um, the most, um, the easiest way to interact with a large audience. But one thing that is very important to say is that you need to use the chat box to your advantage. So not only leaving it there for people to chat and write their things when uh, you present and you don't take um, care of that. So um, we have been trying to, um, to do this all the time. Can you identify some of our actions during this section, do this session uh, uh, that makes you feel that we were considering it? Yeah, um, active, actively, yeah. Um, if you could write it in the chat box. You can write about any behaviors you think we um, adopted in order to interact and solve problems with you via the chat. <laughs> Bo says he loved the drawing on the image. Yeah, that was, I think it's 
a favorite with everyone when it works well. I see more things. Pose and drawing was the best for me. Yeah, with so many uh, participants, it can get very messy. Um, but you can also just um, activate some groups and ask people to, to do. Okay, so now I find it. John, you said that we were reading out loud the chat comments. That's, yeah, you, you got it right. Yeah, in terms of chat, if you want to use them at your advantage, you really need to um, debrief the chat. So you kind of keep your eyes there every now and then. Um, you look at the, um, the messages, you read them aloud, out aloud, because not everyone is paying attention at the chat. So you acknowledge the comments that people um, are making. You use people's names. This makes it a little bit more personal. So they know you are looking at every single comment there. Uh, and you try to make the link between comments. For example, we had voice just uh, a few minutes ago with people expressing their opinion on the use of streaming video, but also we have a chat message on that. So you can make the connection if people didn't spot that. Uh, and you can encourage peer-to-peer -peer dialogue even in the chat, yeah? So that, that was a way for you to make your chat um, uh, windows more active because people really feel that you are taking care of that and uh, you are paying attention. So summarizing, because <laughs> I see the time is going, um, we made a few suggestions in this session about what can be done uh, to make training sessions more active. Actually, we have tried to do this very same things ourselves during this live session. Uh, so that uh, we may minimize our audience's need to multitask during the presentation. Besides, I believe some will also have done it um, uh, in case they cannot stop working or some, some reason similar to that. So we hope that we were at least at some degree um, successful in this aspect. And uh, to finalize, we would like you to think about what you would be doing, an action you would be adopting in the next time you offer a live online session. Um, and uh, if you remember, for those who had the time to answer to our small survey before uh, this session, we asked this question what they would do specifically and to make a weather briefing more active. And here are some of your answers, uh, like asking the attendees to share their current weather. So it's not only the presenter uh, talking, um, ask questions and provide more opportunity for attendees to ask their own questions and actually also answer the questions. So keeping a balance between how much the presenter does for the presentation for, for this a weather briefing together with how much the attendees do. It seems that um, trainers want more of this. Uh, use plenty of illustrations, maps, charts, images, make attendees feel relaxed and welcome. So they kind of feel more inclined to participate in the discussions. Uh, I think here there is something very interesting maybe rename the weather briefing and call it a weather discussion instead. So it, this um, makes the expectation quite different, like a briefing usually is something you hear about, a discussion is something you participate in. So maybe, yeah, that's a good one. And finally, have a plan B to keep in touch with attendees in case of technical problems. Yeah, um, technical problems are, um, a common thing in uh, any uh, online um, conferencing system you use. Um, we have used a variety and we, we know that our experience says that. So having a plan B is always good. So even in this session, for example, you saw that um, when Aveza was trying to show a video, um, the video was uploaded that, but anytime I passed him the uh, presenters right, the video would disappear. 
So the way we showed it is that I kept <laughs> the presenter right and I kept turning on the video so you could see it. So plan B is always something uh, we want to have. Um, so if you have any suggestions like uh, what would be an action that you would adopt uh, for your live online training as a result of participation in this uh, session today, we would love to hear that. And uh, I know we have uh, just one minute more in this session, so you, you, please keep, keep writing. I see many writing already in, in the chat box, but also we don't need to limit to this online session. We can keep this conversation um, in the course forum. Uh, so in, in fact, we would love to read your feedback on how active or not active this webinar was. Um, we are used to send you feedback on your TDPs. Now we want your feedback on this training session. And we really, really love suggestions so that we can improve. So from my side here, I say thank you so much for you all being here with us for one whole hour. Um, the camera, yeah, I'll put the camera here. <laughs> Thanks also from me. Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot. You guys did great. Thank you.